Welcome back to Blender for Blogs. I'm Justin, and this is a video series uh, where we are using Blender to edit videos for our blogs. Uh, and you know that if you've already been following along. And if you've already been following along, you know that I have been sort of MIA in the past few weeks. And I do want to offer my sincerest apologies. I am so sorry. I never meant for this video series to drag out so long. Um, but uh, this summer has been just really crazy, filled with a lot of stuff, including in the past few weeks, I just moved to my own brand new apartment. Um, well, it's not brand new apartment, but it's brand new to me. And um, I am, I was living with family before, and now I am living on my own, which I am super excited about. I've got my own little office set up here in the um, living room. And I've got a, you know, my, it's separate now from my bedroom, which it wasn't before. But Anyway, you don't need to know all that. All you need to know is that I'm finally getting to the point where I'm getting settled in. I've got my desk. I've got a little mini studio, I suppose, that you could say, where now I can hopefully start really honing in on, on the rest of the tutorial or the rest of the videos for the uh, the series. And um, I actually have a lot of plans to going forward, even after the series. I, I want to do so much with Blender. Um, and so I'm really excited, and I, I hope you're excited too. And I've, I want to also thank you so much for, one, your patience with me, but also thank you so much for... Um, uh, the, the comments that you've left, and I'm glad that this has been a really helpful uh, video series for you, and um, I'm I'm really enjoying it. I'm, I'm enjoying kind of uh, making the, the tutorials and also, you know, hearing the feedback from you and kind of, you know, working through uh, Blender's video sequence editor with you uh, along the way. So, um, I, yeah, I just wanted to say, like, I'm going to try to get back on track. We're going to try to, I'm going to try to crank some more out. Uh, hopefully I will now start to have a little bit more time to be a little bit more consistent. So again, thank you for your patience. I'm really excited. And now let's uh, get to the next couple tutorials. By the way, Blender for Blogs, you can find it on blenderfrenzy.com or YouTube Blender Frenzy. Um, and if you don't know what it is, if this is their, your first video that you're seeing that we're tuning in, then you can go to those places, blenderfrenzy.com blender frenzy on youtube you check out everything that uh that i'm doing so far there so okay well over and out or not over and out let's get started with the next tutorial now <laughs> uh, let's get started this video is about uh markers and the marker workflow there are two types of marker workflows i want to show you today so let's get started um we left off on b4b demo 0403 i'm going to save as hit the plus now it's 404 um, not an error, hopefully. Uh, this, these are our fades here. I'm actually not going to be using them, so I'm going to box select them and delete them. Oops. Oh, no, we're not playing here. No, oh, stop it. Stop. Let's try that again. Let's hit the right buttons this time. X to delete. There we go. Now you can keep those fades if you uh, are using fades. I'm actually not using them. So I'm going to uh, reorganize some things here, grab the background drop it right above that color, and then I'm going to move the pre-cut footage up right under our uh, image sequence, and that's because I know I'm going to be using this uh, pre-cut footage. If you're not going to be using it, and you know you're not going to be using it, no problem. You can just, uh, I would suggest then if you don't have this, that you would grab that and move that up so that these two are close together. And one more thing, uh, just uh, something that's very useful, I want to point out is that while you're clicking and dragging the timeline cursor, scrubbing through your um, all your strips here, if you click and drag without uh, hovering over a, any specific strip, it's going to show you everything that you have in your project on the pre image preview up here. But if you hover over a strip and you click and drag that timeline, you will see just that uh, strip information. Uh, same thing here with the pre-cut footage. If I do that, uh, that's all that I see. And that is really, really useful, especially if you have layers and layers of different things and you need to see just one layer and what that's doing. Um, it's really useful and fast because see, uh, our pre-cut foot footage is actually hidden. So we wouldn't even be able to see this, uh, you know, if I drug that up here, uh, it's, you can't see it. Um, so uh, I don't even have to unhide it to see it, just click and drag over that and that 
um, is going to show us that. That's really cool. If you do it over the audio, of course, it has no visual properties. Um, here's our background if you just want to see the background. So that's that's something that's really useful. Okay, onto the markers. Uh, let's find the first place that I know I want to do some edits. And that, basically that's what the marker marker workflow does. You kind of go through your footage and you find where you want to add or take away or edit certain things and you just put a marker there so you can remember to do that in the future. So let's find out where I want to do mine Software. first. Meaning everything. Okay, I think it's over Visual here. Footage like this. Yeah. So this is where I want to cut to or wipe to my original footage. So original footage like this. Like this here. So maybe right about here, right before I put my arms down. Okay. So get your timeline cursor where you want it, and then press M for marker. And then if you move your timeline cursor, you can see this dotted line where you've placed your marker and an orange triangle there. And the orange is actually just uh, because it's selected. And you see that F524, that's the frame that you've put it on. And if I uh, hover over it and hit A, that'll toggle the selection. And you gotta be careful with that because if you're hovering over up here in the sequencer, uh, you're gonna toggle uh, the strips. But if you um, hover over down close to this scroll bar, it's going to um, toggle the selection for all of the markers. And it's very um, information, or very very important to um, very important information is what I'm trying to say uh, for you to know because it also works with G for grab. These are my strips that I'm grabbing, or G down here to grab. Same thing with X to delete, erase strips or X down here to delete the markers. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so with this selected, I'm going to hit, and my mouse cursor down here, I'm gonna hit Control M, and that will allow me to rename the marker. So I'm gonna put original footage here. Enter, and then enter. And now we have a marker set for original footage. So now I know exactly where I want to start uh, that edit for my original footage. So let's do another one. Let's zoom in here. Cut out everything that you don't want like this. Okay, and actually it's going a little bit slow. I'm going to go to my view settings over here, change my proxy size to 25%. I'm also just gonna change this down to 50% there. Refresh my sequencer so it's a little bit faster. You don't want like this. Okay, so cutting out everything you don't want like this, I know I want a little like, Right when this changes, I want a little boop, because I think that's funny. It's like a little outtakes kind of thing. So M and Control M, because it, it automatically uh, s makes that selected. And then I'm going to type in boop. There we go. Enter, enter. And now we have two markers. And basically, I'm not going to put any more, but that's how you would do it. You would just go around uh, your footage marking things that you want to keep in mind to remember to edit or add or whatever. Uh, now the cool thing with the markers is that you can jump directly to them. So if I go over here and click marker, I can go up to jump to previous marker, just like that. Jump to previous marker or jump to next marker. And there's even shortcuts. So if I hit marker and you see that the T here is underlined, if I hit T, it will go to the previous one. J is underlined here, so if I just, uh, over here, marker J, and that will jump to the next one. So that's really cool, because if you're zoomed out um, and you need to be exactly on that marker, if you just try to drag that um, timeline cursor over it, it might, from a, a really zoomed out perspective, look like you're on that. But let's zoom in here real quick, just like that. Oh, and that actually did work. <laughs> I'm actually right on that. But a lot of times you won't actually get it. It will be like this. See if it's one frame out or a couple frames out, but I'm zoomed out. You can see it looks like it's uh, exactly on there. So that's where your jump to uh, the next and the previous are going to help you there. However, um, there is a better way to do this. I don't like the markers per se like this because the words are really hard to read down here and they overlap each other like this, which is really, I don't like. Um, now it does bring this up here if it's selected, but let's say none of these are selected. Oh, I guess that, that does bring that up, but um, yeah. 
but some of them it's just still hard to read so uh instead well and also it, you just have this line it's just so uh, here's a line where something goes there's not a lot of visual cues here so instead i will go to my first um oops jump to the next marker there we go first marker here and then i'm actually gonna come down here hit a for all and delete those because i'm going to show you a, a second way to do it so we want our first marker here and instead of a marker i'm going to add in a color strip so i'm going to select this one here because i want to see what uh, channel it's on okay it's on channel 12 right up here so over here shift a to add in an effect strip color and then up here i'm just going to type in 13 because i want it right above this strip now it's black i want to change this to probably something like a uh, bright yellow because that gives me a better visual representation of where i need to edit and what i like about this is that then i can stretch this out i don't want like this and then remove your green screen so i know i want my footage until i remove the green screen and so my i remove it right where my thumbs go up like that I know that's where I want that to cut out. So I want it from stretch from here to there. Now, see, that is much better visual representation. Um, when I'm zoomed out, I know that oh, here, the, from here to here, this is where my original footage is going to be. Um, and uh, let's see, we can also rename this up here to original footage, enter. And then when it's not selected, it's very easy to read. Now, if you're zoomed out, it'll disappear. But if you zoom in enough, then um, you'll see that exactly what it says there. Uh, now, one more thing I want to do with this is see when I hover over it or um, uh, scroll the timeline over it, you can see it's, it's yellow up in our image uh, preview. And we don't want that. Now, I could hide it, uh, select it, and H. But this way, uh, the it doesn't actually recognize the ends of it. So if I do page up or page down, uh, the ends aren't recognized if I want to snap to them. So instead of hiding them, uh, I'll unhide that and come up here to opacity and pull all that all the way down. And now you can see I don't see the yellow at all here in the image preview, but uh, the full yellow is still here. And if I hit page up or page down, now I can snap right onto those so that's how i like to do it so i get the first one set up like this and i don't i don't have to do uh the same tedious work for all the other ones because all i'm going to do is uh duplicate this one so let's find the next thing and i think it's actually in here because i want to cut like that this. out where, where our boop is supposed to go yeah so right here is where i cut out so shift if i select here let's select all of them select none of them Make sure only this one is selected. Shift D to duplicate. And then Shift S to snap that right where I want that to be. And actually, it's going to be right before and right after that timeline thing. So that's where my boop is. And I'm going to name it to boop because it's a funny name. OK, we'll just make it three, three O's there. Boop. All right. And then uh, I, let's do one more. So. Add a new background. So talking about background here, let's just say Shift D, Shift S, and then we're going to name this to background here. There we go. So now I have that visual representation of the things that I want to add here. Now I've actually done this already uh, to show you uh, kind of how it would look after you're done. And like I said, this is so easy to see where all my edits are going to be. Now, a couple things to note here is that, first of all, the beginning here is a lot more complicated than you're probably going to start with. And the reason is, is because I actually don't use marker um, workflows at all. When I edited the original footage in the promo video, I didn't use any marker system. And, and that there's a couple reasons for that. One it's just my thinking is organic so 
when I um, start to edit, I actually don't know exactly what I'm going to put in here. I don't know that the text here is going to be this long. I don't know I'm going to do an animation here necessarily um, uh, because I think that was my animation if I zoom in here. Yeah, so I got picture animation, bullet list animation, then wipes, and then another wipe here. Now, I didn't know all of that uh, when I first started. So as I go along, I have get my creative juices flowing and then I start to add things and I'm like oh this will be cool here and maybe if I do this and I do a lot of experimenting so that's something I can't actually teach um, so it's something you're gonna have to just do organically and how how you best think about things and and how your creativity works for for you um, but I was able to do this beginning part here because I just looked back at the video that I already did and I'm like, yep, from here to here, this is what I had there. But when you do it, it's probably going to look more like this. So um, it's going to be like, well, I know I want um, some screenshots here. Uh, so I'm going to do that. And I know I want some editing screenshots here. And maybe I want a, a bug picture right here. Um, and then here, maybe I want a little like joke or psych picture there. Um, maybe a cut zoom here or a power, some sort of PowerPoint or, or Google uh, search here. You know, so it's just a lot more vague and broad of an idea of your first um, impressions of what you think when you sit down to, to edit. And my suggestion is don't take a long time doing this. And here's why it brings me to the other reason why I don't use this workflow or I didn't use this workflow until now and it's because uh, let's just do the original footage here the time it takes me to add this uh, original footage strip change the color change the opacity and get it to exactly where I want I could have actually done the same thing with the actual original footage so I'm kind of doubling my work here. So I did it with the strip. Now I have to do it with my pre-cut footage. And so honestly, it's like, it's, it's a toss up on what, whether or not I actually want to use this method. Now, I think I still like it because it gives me a big picture kind of goal or a plan or a, some sort of outline. And what that does is save me time thinking about it in the future. So when I go through it, um, maybe I, I'm like, oh, yeah, this would be really good here. Um, and then I have an idea, but I don't write it down or I don't notate it. And then I forget it later. Or um, it's not exactly maybe maybe I'll, I'll think of something really good. And then, you know, I don't remember exactly how it went. And yeah, so this is good for notes and outlines and things like that. So I definitely recommend um kind of checking it out see if it works for you if if it doesn't that's fine but yeah check it out but like i said don't spend a lot of time on it i mean if you want to do it this way just quick i want something here i want something here maybe maybe quick notes um kind of one one run through of it real quick so that i mean it would i mean take about i would say 20 30 minutes to do um not too long and then after you're finished with that you just go right back and get started editing now um, because I don't want to constantly move all of these while I'm editing, because I'm going to be cutting and pasting things in here and slicing them and moving them, I don't want to do that to everything. So what I thought might be the best idea is to come up here and instead of mix one, name this um, something like markings, and then make a full copy, and then name this mix one, and then uh, keep everything. Let's see, I'm going to select everything. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Uh, you can either select everything that you want to keep and then hit Control I, and that will invert your selection, and then that will uh, select everything else that you didn't have selected, and then you can just delete that. Or you could do it another way where you select everything and then deselect the ones that you want to. Oops. Um, select everything shift and then you're going to have to double select these and the reason is is because the first selection will always make it active and that means it changes that white border you can see that white border kind of moving there and i'm not selecting or deselecting these i'm just changing which one is the active one and you can see over here in the properties the properties change depending on which one is the active one so just remember when you're deselecting things like that, you have to select it, make it active, and then select it again to deselect it. Okay. 
So now uh, I have all of the ones deselected that I want to keep, X and delete those. And now I have my mix one, uh, which I'll do all of my editing on. And then I have my markings, which I can use for reference. And I can go back here and I can be like, oh yeah, this is what I want to, to put here. And then I'm, you know, go and I make that change. So that is uh, the two types of marker workflows that you can play around with. Uh, this is the one that I like so far, so I'm going to keep it just like this. I'm going to save it, and then I'm going to shift, save it, and um, I'm going to actually do a new um, big number. So 501, enter, enter, shift, save again, 502. And this is where we will start off with our first edit, where we're going to put that original footage in here with a wipe. So I will see you in the next video.